necessarily. <sighs> I, never, I always think you're doing a, a sound check and then. <sighs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast or show in general on the internet or otherwise. That's right. <sighs> That's right. <sighs> The one, the only, Mushroom Stories. Yeah. <laughs> that was an uncharacteristic fanfare. Yeah. I just kind of went with it, you know? Yeah. The Mission Stories podcast. I went, I was like, instead of doing the thing we always do, which is sort of like, you know, halfway through an episode, we're like, oh, by the way, the mission story is a funny joke. <laughs> it's like, let's just go. Let's hit him right at the top with some. Uh, uh, what's that old uh, the guy? I don't know. Bob wanna, Hope. Bob Hope. No. Um, the guy who had the television show. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Well, yes, but no. Uh, who's the one that the Beatles went on? Johnny Carson. That's not Johnny Carson. Oh, that show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dick, Beatles. Dick Van Dyke. Nope. What is that guy's name? Man, if we had a third person here, I bet they'd know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only the two of us. Ah, uh, shoot. The road show. We'll figure it out by the end of the episode. That it was, was a our... show where people went and performed. And they're always like, <sighs> and it's like, ding, 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 Oh yeah, and that. Meanwhile, in the background, all the girls are like, ah. right? You know, that is definitely <laughs> a show that existed. What was it called? That doesn't matter. Okay, so we were talking about music for uh, some reason before we started the podcast, and we we, right. we want to talk a little bit about that today. Music, hymns, music, hymns. The thing I was going to bring up. Is you're like, okay, what are we going to talk about? Yes. Because we scheduled a time. We're like, we're getting in the studio. Yeah. We're recording another ep. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I was like, what do we even have to say anymore at Nothing. this point? Nothing. And it was <laughs> even real tricky. Got my flu shot today. Okay. You know, we're at the SAIT clinic. And how are you feeling? Mentally, <sighs> autistically, and otherwise? Truth be told, I've never had a flu shot before. Okay. Because I don't believe in them. I don't want autism. Is it? <laughs> Do flu shots give you autism? No. Yes. No. But also, don't want to risk it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're sitting there, and then my we're, there's like a social event for the MLT students. They're, what's MLT? Medical laboratory technologists. Okay. Not technicians. We get upset if you say technicians. What's the difference? Someone asked that today. Um, it me it makes a big difference in engineering. In engineering, you have like technicians, then engineering technologists, then engineers, and there's like a very <laughs> clear, distinct difference. But in the medical lab, you have medical lab assistants. Okay. Who we got told today we're not allowed to think that we're better than them, just that they have a different job. You got us. actually told that? Yeah, where it's like a poor, you know, for professionalism, and you can't think we're better than the end. Hold on. But we go to school for like four times as long as them. They're basically <laughs> trash. We go to school for a month. They go for a week. What? Sorry, I just insulted so How many dare people you? at once. <laughs> How One dare you? One of them was my co-host. Bad energy to start the show. We with. are registered professionals <laughs> okay. and with a regulated professional body by the end of it point is somewhere in between a medical lab technologist and a medical lab assistant is this weird creature called a medical lab technician a creature what makes them a technician <laughs> no one really knows it's all kind of new it's like if a medical lab assistant gets on the job training you they might call themselves a technician but they're not a technologist. Don't say you are and if one. if they call themselves a technologist, we'll kill them. Yep. You'll think you're better than them as you have your hands around their throat. Yeah. Squeezing the life out of them. Uh, but we can't call ourselves medical laboratory scientists. <laughs> there is a hierarchy. And we must we, abide by and it. And if we called ourselves medical laboratory scientists, mm -hmm. we would get killed. By them. And that's how it works. And it's fair. 
It's very much like the Sith. <laughs> that can only be... How many can of you can there be? There can only be two Sith, as we know. Right. The Master and the Apprentice. The Apprentice always has to kill the Master mm-hmm. keep the Master, you know, in line. Well, here's a question. So it's like reverse Siths, <laughs> where the Masters always kill the younger ones. Why would they keep getting Apprentices, then, if the Sith know that they're going to have to be killed by the Apprentice someday? Oh, my gosh, Troy. Have you not read any Star Wars lore or philosophy? I actually have... Only stuck to the films, only the easy things that I can watch. Disgusting. Pathetic. Uh, Well, the idea is the apprentice, through his striving to destroy you, makes you stronger. Oh. And them stronger. Oh, wow. And you would weed out the weak apprentices. Apprentices? Yes. While making yourself stronger and still providing a future for the Sith. (laughs) <laughs> i'm glad that uh the sith are concerned with uh with their longevity they they just seem like selfish people don't they that's why they could only have two because <laughs> two, two too many sith destroyed themselves through their lust for power have there ever been more than two i guess you just answered my question yes until darth bane who Drop implemented? <laughs> who implemented the rule of two? You were born in the dark. Anyway, so do you know what I just what I was doing there? Yeah. Okay. Dark. You, dark night rises. Yeah, you just looked like you didn't know. Well, I didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't like this crossover. Okay. Uh, what about the thought police? But yeah. Note? So, anyways, flu shot. <laughs> You're not allowed so, to think poorly of. Some other group. You're not even allowed to think poorly of them. I know. Well, I thought it was funny. Well, it's just, you know, because you're in the lab. If you've ever gotten your blood work done, mm-hmm. you were probably dealing with an MLA. And, it, and so they're okay. like the face of the lab. They actually are like the patient facing side. Okay. And we don't have to deal with that. So we have to respect them. You're the one swishing the blood around in your mouth, seeing how it tastes. My mouth pipetting semen samples. <laughs> uh, I thought you'd like that one. That's semen cool. samples. We actually do that next week. In your mouth? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. We're learning how to do semen analysis next week. <laughs> we might have to put the E tag on this episode if we keep talking about semen. One more semen, and I think we're, uh, oh, shoot. Well, mouth pipetting would get a not safe for work <laughs> tag. Because you don't mouth pipette anymore. It's too dangerous. What is mouth pipetting? <laughs> <laughs> I like how I I, I appreciate just, that you've igno- sort of like assumed I knew what that was. but Everyone knows about pipetting. Pipetting is like the little, if you see like the classic scientist like in the lab and they're posing with like a long glass thing, mm-hmm. it's a pipette. It's how you measure reagents and stuff it's like very volumetric pipetting so it like sucks up the thingamajig okay into like the little there's a little bulb and then you measure it out get the meniscus right on the line so you have exactly two milliliters or whatever it is yes of solution in that okay so it's like you know and you use like a little bulb to suck up the solution but apparently back in the day they had mouth pipettes where you literally just put your mouth <laughs> and started sucking it up. That is horrible. And then, yeah, a lot of bad things happened. <laughs> People would like get AIDS and stuff from that. Wait, how recently like, were we doing this? Uh, I don't know, 70s maybe. The 70s. And so then the joke, you know, is like older technologists are just like, you kids have it easy. Back in my day, we used to mouth pipette semen samples. <laughs> <laughs> So we're now officially explicit. Thanks, Lyndon. So we always keep that. Uh, you always keep that joke in your back pocket as a tech. Speaking of technologist jokes, mm-hmm. I killed it. I felt I know you'd appreciate this. OK, we are sitting in the hallway waiting for a lab. And then someone was talking about like the different types of clouds and how it's like useless information. and They don't know it. But so many people yeah. can list all the different types of clouds. And they're like, Columer, Cumulonimbus. Cirrus. Yeah. All that stuff. And then I was like, clouds, don't you mean simple Squamish clouds? Cuboidal <laughs> clouds? And they all laughed. 
And they all laughed. That was... Because they're like, only the people in this hallway would laugh at that joke. And I was like, man, I am such a good comedian. Is there context that I'm missing that I don't... The reason yeah, those, I don't find those, those are all funny. the different types of epithelial tissue. Oh, okay. You know, like simple, cuboidal, squamish, ciliated. Okay. So it's kind of like the clouds, but it's epithelial tissue. And they're like, <laughs> we're the only people that would ever laugh at that joke. And I'm like, I know. That's why and, I said it. And then you inflicted it upon all of us idiots listening to the podcast. Well, the point is you'd appreciate that feeling of landing a joke. I appreciate feeling funny. Yes. I'm <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad. So, I'm so smart. Let's see. Did I feel funny recently? No. Let's move on. <laughs> Point is, flu shots. <laughs> oh, yeah, the flu <laughs> shots. I got my flu shot. Hey, what's that thing in the bottle you got there? Oh, this this is my soda stream. <laughs> what is that? That's, that's <laughs> my uh, home soda making device. I got to get hydrated for my basketball game tonight, so I'm drinking, drinking uh, some soda. Home, <laughs> homemade diet root beer. That looks... Uh... How does it taste? Does it taste as bad as it looks? Bad. <laughs> bad? How could you say that? This brown, flat-looking fluid is delicious. No, it's fizzy. Don't worry. Is it? Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, see. I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to poop on. Uh, I mean, soda I understand stream. where you're coming from. Where you're, you don't own a soda stream, <laughs> so you don't understand. I don't get it. Some people just don't get it. Where you know, someone like myself can have bubbly water whenever i want yeah um i'm just you know a step above you are a step above and a step beyond okay flu shots so we're in we're getting our flu shot Mm -hmm. and they're like hey we're having games after this are you coming Lyndon?" and i was like i can't i have to wait 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 wait. who's who who, my fellow classmates who are also getting their flu shot all again okay i see and I'm just like, can't do it. I got things to do, places to be. I got to record the podcast. I got to play a basketball game. Mm-hmm. And they're like, a podcast. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> what, what have I done? So I'm just like, I have a podcast. It's called the Mission Stories Podcast. And they're like, where can we hear that? I'm like, anywhere you get your podcasts. They're like, what's it about? And I'm like, oh. Ooh. I'm like, well. As the name implies, originally, sometimes we tell stories from our missions, yes. and then someone immediately was like, oh, where'd you serve your mission? Which caught me off guard, because uh-huh. I was like, are we just such a normal part of the culture that people are just like, oh. Yeah. Someone's talking about mission stories. He's one of them Mormons, oh, and, Mormon. they know, and they know to ask, where'd you serve? And I'm like, Arizona. And I was like, and it started with mission stories, and it turned into like doctrine and theology and pop culture. And then I, really, I just need to say it's the intense investigation, the tableau of Troy and Lyndon's friendship. It really is. Investigative tableau. Ooh, I like that. An investigative tableau of our friendship. Where it's like, but yeah, and that's, I always dread that. Where it's just like, oh, I got to record the podcast. Or like, what isn't it? And it's like. <laughs> Oh, man. That's, I mean, like, you could just lie. You could just, like, say, I got to go feed my cat or anything else. I'm so, like, I. People always say, like, oh, I got to, like, someone I think today said they're like, oh, my girlfriend's working. I got to go feed my dog. Yeah. Everyone's got to feed their dog. Yeah. So it's not even. But like my a, dog is a podcast yes. that I have a difficult time explaining. <laughs> but then, because then even driving here, I'm like, what are we even talking about today? Yeah. And I, I was like, you know, I don't even care. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm looking forward to? What? The time I get to spend with my friend Troy. <sighs> yes. Because as we go into our 30s, we need excuses like this, little projects to keep friendships alive. That's how a lot of male friendships are. That's true. Activity based. Yeah. That's how a lot of male friendships are. Podcast based. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so glad that uh, I'm so glad how proud you are of the podcast and that you like tell everyone. Well, I, I, I don't, but I just don't lie to people. Mm. See, I, I'm willing to keep the, the Well, truth I think from... I even told them, I was, I was just like, it's a little esoteric, yeah. you know? Yeah. I just, I thought by just saying that word, it would scare them away from it. And, and they were, I'm sure, scared. Yeah. yeah. But if they want to look it up, 
they know exactly how. Interesting. Yeah, I uh, I think I turned some people onto the podcast. I don't know if they listened, but man, I tell you, we keep mentioning this. We keep tooting our own little tiny horn every chance we get. Every it's time. true. I also told them I was like, we got like six thousand listens. No big deal. Sure, we do. I don't even know if that. Num- I don't know what that number actually is. Let's toot our tiny little horns again. And I said we're a hundred thousand listens away from, <laughs> you know, being relevant. You know what's funny though is that we'll never be. It doesn't matter how many like cumulative listens we get. It's just like the per week or per episode listen that really matters. So unfortunately, last okay, what do we got here? All today, all time, all time, six thousand seven hundred ninety-eight listens. Hey, oh, I don't know what that means. Maybe just people clicking once on an episode and listening for five seconds counts. But hey. Clicks a click. Clicks a click, baby. Listen's a listen. A listen's a listen, baby. And that is the story of your flu shot. What happened with the flu shot? That was the story. The story was like how I feel about the podcast. Okay. That was the story. Well, the flu shot went well, I assume. And this was today. Today. I think I still have the bandage on. I don't think I'm taking it off. Well, did it hurt? uh, It was a little tender. Yeah. Uh, I got a spiel because I circled that I've never had a flu shot before. Okay. So like the pharmacist had to be like, well, this means I have to sell you on it Mm. because obviously you're only here because you're forced to. I was like, (laughs) yeah. Who forced you? Well, my, my program, like you can't be a medical professional Uh, without having a flu shot. Is that true? Yeah. I had to get all sorts of vaccinations. Oh, like what? What did they give me? What are you protected against now? All the the hepatitises, mm. hepatitis. How dare they try to protect you from disease? DDT. Well, they're trying to protect like their actually, precious samples. Oh yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> their precious semen samples. <laughs> That's ninety percent of what we do. <laughs> uh, we it, they always sell it as like this is for patient safety, but it's a hundred percent to protect us from the patients. I say from lawsuits from sick people making us sick. Uh, uh mm, okay. I heard it was a myth that um, that you can get the flu from the flu shot. Is that true? Well, <laughs> well interestingly no. enough, <laughs> what happened? The flu shot takes. Uh, there's two reasons people get. They mistake the stomach flu for the flu. The stomach flu is like the norovirus. Okay. It's not an actual influenza. Okay. So that's one mistake. The second one is it takes two weeks for the vaccine to work. So you could get a flu shot and then two days later you have the flu. You're like, you're like, because WTF. Of, you're like, my lizard brain tells me the vaccine just gave me the flu. Yeah. But really the vaccine, you just hadn't built immunity and then you picked it up from some gross person. Correlation, causation, same yeah. thing. So no, you can't get the flu from the flu shot. Do you ever think that people like um, think themselves into getting flu-like symptoms? You know, it's like they get the thing, they get the shot. And then immediately they start to experience, you know, flu-like symptoms because maybe they're psychopaths and they're they're little crazy lizard brains. I think the term is psychosomatics. Yeah. Very much like very very similar in sound to psychopath. Very, you know, they're the same. Same same. Same same. (laughs) Uh, Well, you can get a general malaise from a vaccine just because your body's like churning out antibodies. Right. They can be like, oh, I don't feel so good. That's how I feel every day. Yeah, it's like you're always building <laughs> antibodies. <laughs> okay, well, I think uh, have we exhausted our? Hey, well, this is I'm promoting my profession, which is what they tell us to do. <laughs> you're like, hey, here is a good idea: promote healthcare. Yeah, like it's struggling. Like people are have stopped getting sick. Well, if, if you want me to get into it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Healthcare is struggling. Why? Because people have terrible health literacy. Why? You know what? I I learn these things where I'm just like, oh my gosh, not everyone is as smart and capable as me. No, they're not. Whereas, did you know the average Canadian reads at an eighth grade level? I think I'm at a grade six level. Well, I also like when we told that I was like, 
can't like eighth graders read really well? <laughs> like I was like, isn't reading at an eighth? What does that mean? It's pretty good. Yeah. Cause I was like, I was reading like Robert Ludlum books when I was in the eighth grade. Yeah. You know, what those is, are pretty complicated. What is an eighth grade level even? Well, I think it's like the type of curriculum. So like a college level would be like, you know, you can read college textbooks and understand them. I see. Which is hard because a lot of college textbook textbooks. I still don't understand. Don't them. understand them. Yeah. We're reading at like a grade 10 level. I might be. I think I got stuck at Harry Potter, to be honest with you. That's like a grade six. <laughs> yeah, that is like a grade six level. Yeah. And I'm stuck there. I can't get out. <laughs> Help me. You're like. The, the Dementors are coming. <laughs> Voldemort's here. Anything more complicated than that. And it's like, oof. Hagrid. And I can still see those, <laughs> the way that she uh, phoneticized everything that Hagrid says so that we like can't help but read his accent into the words, you know? He'd be like, hi, Harry, how are you? You're a lizard, Harry. Yeah, <laughs> you're a lizard, yeah. Harry. That's actually, uh, if, I don't know, educators, but that takes Harry Potter up from like that one level. Mm. It's because people speak with different accents in that book. Yeah. So kids have to pick up on that. Kids or Troy. Kids and Troy. And I am a kid at heart. But Troy, you read like Hemingway all the time. I read Hemingway. I got Hemingway's collection of short stories in my... It's my bathroom reader. Yeah. And I'm about one... 25th of the way through that book right now. I feel you. I got it. I read uh, the first one. Yeah. The Short and Tragic Life of Francis McComber. Good one. So good. It's great. Sometimes I think about that. <laughs> yeah, I do sometimes, too. Sometimes I think about that story from time to time. I mean, that's it's a you're kind of joking, but like you're right. Like it is one of those like like man, Francis McComber out on the savanna getting yeah. cucked. <laughs> <laughs> getting his brains blown out. Getting cucked by uh by the Hemingway uh, proxy in the yeah. story. <laughs> With his big 50 cal rifle. A <laughs> uh, little endorsement for uh, Ernest Hemingway. Go read The Short and Tragic Life of Francis McComber. Yeah. This has been Literary Minute with oh. Troy and Linden. One literary minute. So, um, did, we, did we want to talk about anything... Um, uh, <clears throat> I know we had a cut. We had two i two ideas. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Listen, we can get real heavy and into the heavy stuff, and we can address another thing. But I'm thinking, like, maybe not. Maybe like, is it the email? Well, it's not even the email. I don't even. You know, like I started to read some of the email. We got we got another email. Oh, oh these yeah. emails. You know what I mean. <laughs> We keep asking for people to send them. And then they do, and, and it's then like, they do, oh. and we have to address them. It's like, do we keep the promises we made? And I never hear them until you read them to me live. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, maybe we'll <laughs> just skip it. Well, we can't skip it. Well, let's take Do you want to look. save it for later? We could we'll, save it. We can always just bust it out and give it a superficial. Yeah. You know. We'll just bust later. The email out. Now they know it's coming. Yeah. You so, gave them a little teaser. Yeah. Um, but uh, we did, we did want to talk. I don't know if we wanted to talk about it, but uh, music, the hymns. Music, the hymns. Was there anything a to talk? A new play by Troy and Linden. Music, the hymns. <laughs> Can you imagine if we wrote a play? What would that be like? Sometimes I think... I'd make like an excellent playwright. I think you would too. Sometimes I think I'm selling myself short. Should we become the new uh, Hammer Schmidt and 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 Guidelstein? <laughs> Sorry, Ro <laughs> I'm thinking of someone else. Rogers and Hammer Schmidt. Is, Wait, it, is that what they get? Hammer Schmidt or Hammerstein? <laughs> we would really need to. You know who Hammer Schmidt is? Is from uh, Ga or, uh, House of Cards. Oh, yeah. Hammerschmidt, the guy who's, uh, I forget what happened. Does he die? I think he dies. Which one dies. is? <sighs> He's the gruff but lovable uh, news uh, man. Newsman. The newspaper man, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's not dead. 
I forget what happened. He's an editor. He's like an editor, isn't he? Yeah, he was an editor, and then he loses his job, and then he comes back to the job, and he he's he beca- he like goes away for a season or two, and then he comes back as the way that we're gonna take down uh, Francis. There it is again, Francis. Mm-hmm. Friggin' uh, Underwood. And you know what we should do? <laughs> we should just like review uh, TV shows. We well, didn't watched. House of, House of Cards is canceled. Well, we can't, we it, can't like canceled in the cultural sense and canceled in the literal sense. Well, it was finished, but uh, Kevin it was it. They had another season ready to go. Uh, Kevin Spacey was canceled, and so yeah, they had Kevin to, like, Spacey was can- change it, and all. he was sort of the best part of the show. It was oh yeah for sure, uh, but they got the second best part of the show to sort of pick up the slack. And uh, anyway, I you know what people kind of dump on that last season, but. I was invested. I was in like I watched the first episode and I'm like, I'm into this. I like it. I thought the very last episode was uh You know what it was? You got a feeling that they really didn't have a lot of money. That's what it what? was. A, ne- the- a Netflix production? Yeah. Actually I did hear that Netflix is hemorrhaging money <laughs> like nobody's business. I have heard like this they're in too. the business of hemorrhaging money. Yeah. And it's like their goal almost to be bought, maybe, by another uh, streaming, like an Amazon. I think they are. I heard this from another podcast, so it must be true. No, no, no. You don't think so? Why would Amazon ever buy Netflix? (laughs) They're in like a... First of all, Disney Plus comes out in like a few days, right? Yes. And Disney Plus is going to... Crush them all? Well, I guess Disney Disney, Disney might buy them. Disney could. I mean, that's the move, right? That's the smart Because Amazon, Amazon has also been hemorrhaging money. Yeah, they, I don't, I don't know. Well, they're I mean, they're not like hemorrhaging money. They're just spending money because it's Amazon. And they're <laughs> like, if we spend a whole bunch of money on original productions, we might be able to crush Netflix. Yeah. I don't think. They crush it to the point of buying it. Do you have Amazon uh, Prime? No, I had it briefly. Yeah. I hear the selection is not great. It seems to have more... My thing, They had Hunt for Red October, which by my standards mm-hmm. is they're doing a great job. And they had uh, Jim Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I thought Jim Ryan was a great show. In fact, I think the second season's out. There's a new season. And I want to watch Jim Halpert take down terrorists. You know what's funny? I saw a trailer for that show, and it was basically... It was like Jim Halpert, you know, in the office, whenever Jim would do, when he, he was like trolling uh, Dwight and whenever he did, he would put on this voice of like, we need to do this. This is what needs to happen. And if we don't, something really bad is going to happen. And it was just like, oh, that's a fake, obviously a fake voice. Yeah. Different from the sarcastic sort of normal uh, yeah. you way know, he's that like, he He's like mocking Dwight's authoritative. Yeah, his sort of like serious take on life. That looks like that's the whole Jack Ryan show is him just troll. being the person. Being the Dwight troll. Yeah. Am I wrong? How was my analysis? Is it dead on? This is 90% right. <laughs> wow. It's the best grade I've ever received. 10% is, you know, him being like, I'm just a... Regular old analyst. And then he like kicks butt. <laughs> Just kidding. I have extensive uh, military training. He's like, I I teach university and I'm an analyst at the CIA I teach on the side. Economics. I'm like a nerd. He's like six foot four and yeah, jacked from all his jacked. other like he's military yoked. stuff. From when he saved, uh, you know, Benghazi from yeah. terrorists. <laughs> when he saved Benghazi, <laughs> those emails. <laughs> And when he, uh, what else did he do? Who wasn't that? Uh, the other guy from the office was in that, right? <laughs> yeah, because I saw the memes where it's like him and what's Ro- his name? Rob, Ron, Rob. Ra- I want to call him Aaron, but I know it's not Aaron. That's the girl's name. What was his R- name? Rod. If you have an idea what his name is, call it, and we'll answer. Give us a call right now. We yeah. will not be recording when you call. <laughs> Uh, we'll come back to it. This is, and, but anyways, they're just we'll like super up. jacked and in their, you know, little soldier mercenary outfits. And they're like, we got to go save Pam. Pam's upset. Pam's, uh, fiance. <laughs> I wonder if this will work. Pam's fiance's <laughs> name. All right. We have the internet. Yeah. Uh, 
Roy. Roy. Roy rhymes with Troy. No wonder. I find, yeah, that's probably the reason I couldn't remember it because it was so close to my own name. Right. And then it, I, you know what's funny? I have the name Roy inside of my name, which is Troy. Yeah. What do you think it's about right that? in there. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think the T at the beginning. Uh, it kind of changes the whole thing, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I think it's uh, much nicer. Have you ever met, you ever noticed this? Probably not. <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, Every time you see a Troy in, or even a Roy for that matter, in film or TV, they're always the villain. They're always the bad guy. Every time. Name a Troy, except for Troy and Abed. Okay, Troy and Abed. I was going to say... So I immediately negated my own argument. What's the... The one that's not the Odyssey, the Iliad. Of course, the Iliad, yes. That's a pretty big example. Helen of Troy. The entire Trojans were the victims. Yeah. Or bunch, were they? Uh, uh, An interpretation would say... They, they stoked the fires of they war. They deserved everything they got. Yeah. <laughs> Yet again. Thanks, but Homer. No, but no, they're they're not. <laughs> not the villains. <laughs> okay. But... But they are. 100, 100% they're the villains. And I and the, and so this next part of the podcast is going to be us uh, breaking down. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a phone call <laughs> <laughs> from from a listener. Yeah, a true and faithful. Answer it, or well, should we stop? Should we pause? It's, no, it's my father. Uh, He's. It's going to be about hunting business. He'll be. <laughs> you'll be like, Dad, you're on the hour, and he'll. You're be on like, live. He'll be like, I'll call you back. I'll call you later. I don't want to be recorded. None of this. You and your foolish games. Keep me out of your silly games. Your silly child games. <coughs> Hunting is a man's game. Lives are on the line. Quit this podcast and let's discuss <laughs> hunting. How's old Eric doing? Good. Good. He's been hunting. Nonstop? Kind of, actually, yeah. <laughs> okay. He's probably just like, you've breached my privacy enough, son. <laughs> Stop talking about my hunting habits. He's out there hunting the greatest game of all. Man. What is that? What book is that from? Here's another literary minute. Okay. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Is it Hem Hems? No. Hem Hemingway? This is a book they used to do it in high school. Like the guy they crash on his island. And oh, the island makes... of Dr. Moreau. Yeah. And I re- recognize that. In some TV show, someone talked about it. And Jasmine was like, why did that come from? Why do you know about that? I'm like, it's probably... I realized, I'm like, it's a very popular theme yeah. in video games. There's always one quest that follows that plot to the, that book. Yeah. And I was like... And it also shows up in TV a lot, like Lost. Are we, are we talking about Lord of the Flies right now? No. Are we talking about not the island of Dr. Moreau? No, because I think his name was like Count something. Count Dooku? Not Count Dooku. (laughs) (laughs) Star Wars. Book where they hunt man. (laughs) Book where they hunt humans. We have like successfully The most dangerous game. Is that what it's actually called? It's called called The Most Dangerous Game. Well, how do you like that? By Richard Connell. First published in 1924, and it was like you know high school curriculum for the till like the 60s. Whew. Did you ever read Omega Man? No. Don't know why I thought of that. Do you know what that is? That's uh, that's that Will Smith movie uh, where he is the last guy on Earth. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's that? I am Legend. I am Legend. Uh, reminds me of that for some reason. 1970s literature they turned into. Uh, well, this was 1924. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. What other books are good? <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous game. What uh, were we talking about? We were talking about uh, Muslims and Muhammad and uh, the Quran. And uh, how similar we are, Mormons, to the Muslims. And how I think we should start... A Muslim Mormon church. Mormslims. 
<laughs> Morms Lemons. <laughs> That's a perfect name. That's a I love the name. Portmanteau. I love the name. Don't love the idea. The perfect portmanteau. <laughs> portmanteau. Nah. No, that's not what we were talking about before. I was just going to say, we've sort of avoided talking about anything religious or uh, Mormon related this whole time. We could, we could keep it up. Latter-day Saint related. We Unless, could... well, remember we had this discussion. What was it? If it's culturally related, you can use the word Mormon. Oh, is that? Did we have that discussion? I think we did. I don't remember it. If well, actually, we have had this discussion, and that was not established firmly. Okay. Where if you're talking about Mormon, you're either talking about progressive apostates, right? We, I remember this. Yeah. Or you're talking about the culture. Okay. But if you're talking about the doctrine or the church official, Latter Day Saints, Church uh, of day. Christ. Oh, do you want to know a fun fact about uh, Muslims? Yes. They call they have a different name for mary in as in jesus's mother that sounds about right do you know what they call her hmm. miriam miriam or miriam 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 yeah that's nice but that's how my coworker sort of pronounced it pronounced it oh. he didn't elongate the vowels it was right. just very like miriam i was like is that how we're supposed to talk well it's like uh Aisha. Yeah. That's a very famous one. Who is like that? Aisha Curry. Aisha, I think, <laughs> was Muhammad's first wife. Muhammad. Are we allowed to say his name? Uh, Yes. Would people get mad at us and declare jihad on us? Maybe. Yes. Well, let's steer away from this. We'll talk we more. We can't about... say Muhammad with a hard D. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? <laughs> Just Muhammad. Ma- Muhammad. Muhammad? <laughs> what are you doing? How, how are you saying it? <laughs> what were you saying? Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad. All right. Hey, if that's the rule, hey, here at Mission Stories, we're all about the rules. And I'm willing to abide by them if you are. Yeah. Okay. Stick to the rules. Muhammad be praised. <laughs> so, Miriam, um, what else were we talking about right before that, though? Uh, speaking, we could review. I got a good, an email from a true and faithful, not an email, a uh, face mail, face to face. Okay. It's just uh, a conversation then. Yes. Okay. A face mail. <laughs> All right. About uh, the last episode. Yeah. Oh, I have. I ha- oh, that reminds me. You the go true ahead, and though. faithful said, "I love that the official stance of the podcast is that we love Jasmine." Mm-hmm. Uh, they were a little upset that uh, we went in there <laughs> to do a general conference review. <laughs> and normally, how it works is I'm half prepared and you're half prepared. Yeah. And our half preparedness with our pizzazz comes together as a whole. Yeah. And it was very unfair of you. To have be half no prepared. preparation. You know, I was thinking about that. It made us look like fools. I, and I am a fool. And I am sorry to our audience who are expecting me to have at least watched some of it. And uh, and it was, I failed you miserably. It was very kind to me that my half preparation was treated as a full preparation. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. Because like any relationship... Com- I put in 50% effort. You put in 50% effort. 100%. <laughs> Are you supposed to give a 100% effort? Both parties give a 100%? And create a 200% relationship? Yeah. Come on, Troy. Is that imp- that's impossible. That's mathematically impossible. Okay. <laughs> You're right. Except it's well, also it's mathematically very possible. It's not impossible at all. <laughs> it's called <laughs> multiplication. Ugh. Heard of it? Uh, yeah. Ever heard of it? I think we should... Um, I should commit here and now to at least, uh, here's what I commit to doing. I commit to uh, listening to the 12 apostles and the first presidency's messages. I do not commit. And if you're willing to give me some good 70s and other ladies. Well, here's my counter. Okay. Um, Because I started reading a book. By B.H. Roberts, who 
was famous. I remember this. The part. philosopher guy who was only ever a 70. And some people are upset that he never got to be an apostle. Um, and just reading the intro, someone introducing the book, because he was like the church, official church historian mm-hmm. for like the first hundred years. Yeah. Type of deal. Where they're just like. The first hundred years? Like he was. He was alive for a hundred years. Well, he just recorded the church history the first hundred years. Oh, I see. Because, you know, he's, he's kind of in that little zone of he's talking to people who knew the prophet. Right, 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 right. right. You know, he's in that little sweet spot where he can, like, get firsthand accounts of the, the first time. The prophet years. held him as a baby. Kissed his cheek, his rosy little cheeks. I'm trying to do the math on it. No. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> no, that never happened. Okay. Um, Scratch that last. But one of the things was they're talking part. about how upset he was that people diminished the 70 because it used to be like the quorum of the 70 was as powerful oh. as the quorum of the 12. Right. Yeah. And e- equal in a th- like authority. Right. And they almost, you know, democratically they had more votes. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> they were like the Senate and yeah. you know, the 12 was like Congress. If we're speaking to Americans, I thought you were going star Wars and well, going to be like the prophets. Like I am the Senate. And he does this corkscrew 900 and <sighs> not quite like that because I couldn't use the Canadian example because our Senate is fake and not real. Okay. I did not know that, but you don't know about the Canadian Senate. <laughs> I did not. Do we need to discuss this <laughs> quickly? Okay. You Before know, I lose interest in the Senate, you know that Canada has a Senate. What does the Senate do? Well, in Canada, you can't pass legislation the Senate has to sign off on it. I see. But the Senate, no one votes them in. They're appointed. The legislative branch. Yeah. They don't create legislation. Who creates legislation? The House of Parliament. Uh, Members of Parliament. Parliament. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And who's in charge of the country? The <laughs> Prime Minister. I know that. The Prime Minister is the leader. Don't talk down to me. Well, I'm a little worried right now. I know how it works. I'm just testing you. Gotcha. Point but is... how does it work? <laughs> <laughs> Parliament creates legislation. Hold on. They vote on Members it. of Parliament. Members of Parliament. Create legislation. Create legislation. It has to pass through Parliament. And these seats in the House of Parliament? Parliament. Of Commons. Who's the House of Commons? Parliament. That's Parliament. That's confusing. Two names for one thing? Come on. Come on. Get it together. So isn't there like an... Ex- I'm not thinking of the United States executive branch? Yeah. Legislative branch? Do we have that in Canada? Not quite. Or are they the same? Because sort of our executive branch would be like the Prime Minister's office. Yes. But he's just a member of parliament. Yeah. We're double dipping here. So how Americans have three levels, three branches of government to balance themselves out. Uh-huh. Canada has... Like one and a half. Like 1. 1.2. 1. 1.2. 1. Because technically Senate, the Senate has to sign off on it. Uh-huh. But it's more like a his, like honorary thing. Because mm-hmm. they would never not sign off on something because they weren't elected. Right. Members of parliament were elected by the people... The Senate was not. So the senators have no right to deny what the people who were voted by the people so, so, create. So what are they there for? Literally nothing. Okay. It's a waste of money. Got a big problem with that. Yeah. there. It's just a s- traditional thing. So you're saying that 70s are like the Senate. In America. In America. Useful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or they used to be at least. Okay. In the early church when there's a lot of legislation to legislation. pass. All right. So B.H. Roberts was a 70. He was a 70 and he didn't want to see the quorum of the 70 get diminished. Right. So I will only listen to members of 70 at general conference. Oh, you go the other way. I go the other way because <laughs> we don't respect the 70 enough. How about this? Next. And, they're, and they're the ones that like. You know, they're they're pulling out the six shooters when they give talks sometimes because they're like, you know what? You're right. They're like, I might never get up here again. You're right. So they're just like, this is my chance of a lifetime. Sometimes they're pretty good talks. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie. 
Maybe I should go on a kick of listening to conference talks again. There used to Remember be. Remember when you, when you were a missionary? Oh, and I'd listen. And you'd like have a collection of like classic general oh, yeah. conference talks. I still do. They're all on my phone. Maybe I should go on a crazy kick of just like diving into the doctrine and just inculcating myself with. Hey, I bought a B.H. Roberts book. B.H. Roberts. 800 pages called like A Defense of the Latter-day Saints. Yeah. Just like go all in. Drink the Kool-Aid, you know? Chug it back. I want the little purple stains on the corner (laughs) of my mouth. (laughs) Put all, just load up my shelf. Dive into the deep end of Brigham Young, <laughs> Bruce R. Yeah. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith Jr. Oh, you know who's my favorite, actually? Let's talk about this. Hall of Fame speakers. Number, let's call him number three. <laughs> What's his this name? This is a real quick ranking. <laughs> Hall of Fame speakers, number three. Number three is... Uh, can't think of his name right now, but he talks like this. And then he quickly continues on to something else. What is he? What was his name? I got to look it up. I got to look it up, Linda. Prophet, apostle. He's not, he was none of those things. Truman G. Madsen. Ah, Truman G. Big fan of Truman G. Madsen. Truman G. He was. Oh yeah, he'd have like. Immaculate. In his appearance. That's how he talked. Yeah. And uh, I loved it. I just remember being on the Mish and uh, driving around the uh, sunny Georgia side roads <laughs> <laughs> and listening to Truman G just uh, talk about all the best uh, parts of Joseph Smith. And uh, not the full picture by any stretch. But you don't need that as a missionary. No. You need some good old-fashioned encouragement to, yeah. as to the, the the reasons why you're there. So that's number three. Number two, Bruce R. I was going to say. <laughs> Bruce I wish we would have said it at the same time. Yeah, one, two, three. Bruce, Bruce R. McConkey. <laughs> we, should, uh, we should get us. We should sample that. Put it somewhere else. We should begin every episode by saying one, two, three, Bruce R. McConkey. Yeah, he's good. He's got some real classics. He just like, he just shot straight, you know? Back when you were allowed to shoot straight. What? They're not allowed to anymore? (laughs) No. They got to dance around people's feelings. Yeah, they do. And they got to be delicate sensibilities. Frodo went on an adventure. (laughs) Oh. You guys understand that, right? You guys like Lord of the Rings, right? You're like a hobbit, too. Or like, you're treading on thin ice, Ukdor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cancel you. Uh, and then number one is Ukdorf, of course. <laughs> Sorry. After you just, like, mock him. You're no. like, and by the way, he is the best. I'll say this. He is top ten. He's in the latter part of top top ten. He's from five to ten somewhere, six to ten somewhere. Top three, and it's not three, and it's not two. Yeah. In the words of Aubrey Graham. Who's number one? Uh, Rappers? (laughs) I was quoting Drake. I'm going to give it to, um, I guess, Holland. I got to give it to my man Holland. How dare. I'm sorry. I know. I knew that would be controversial to you. To everyone else, it's a. It's obvious, and it's a. He's a dead ringer. Is it obvious? Yes. Name one good <laughs> talk he's done that wasn't about crawling over the Book of Mormon. Oh, plenty. Here's my favorite. One of my favorite talks of all time, Lyndon. Because he gave that one while I was on the mission, where I was primed to be like. Mm, I mm, was mm. too. I was there. Yeah, we both were. <laughs> our, yeah, we were on our missions at the same. We didn't were. we have talk? My first general conference, were you out yet? October 2008? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was in the uh, I was in the MTC. Right, you were in the MTC. I was in the field. Okay. You filthy casual. Well. The mission field. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I was literally across the street from where he, where he gave the talk. <laughs> Man, yeah, that's a good, it's a crazy talk. It's like, 
it's like so uh it's like it's a lot of fire it's fiery right that's right. his style it's almost it's, like a little too much for me because it's like because tad r callister gave a very similar talk to that yeah but it was very much like logic and rational yeah very lawyerly where it's kind of just like hey like no one's disproved the book of mormon was that the probably because it's like a really good book <laughs> Whereas Jeffrey R. Holland is like just taking it real emotional. It's like, you got to crawl over you it with your entrails in your hand. Yeah. And then tell me that it's not true. And shoot Joseph Smith in the face and then leave the church. Yeah. That's... And everyone's just like, oh, snap. I'm never leaving. Yeah. I, uh, you know, it's funny on these... Um, on these, uh, I, f- I feel like a lot of dissenters of the church look at that bo- uh, that um, that talk as like uh, I don't know, sort of a th- uh, like a I don't even know what you would call it, like a, I want to say a dog whistle. I don't think that's the right term here. Just something that's like, why are you being so defensive about it? You know, what are you what are you trying to hide? You know. Nah, that's just apostates. That's apostates, and we don't trust them or like them. But we love them. (laughs) I was about to go, I was about to double down on being hard on them. No, we do love them. We love all uh, Mormons of every stripe. Um, What were we talking? Oh, my favorite talk by Jeffrey R. Holland is called However Long and Hard the Road. It's a BYU devotional. I recommend it to everyone. He talks about... It's basically one of my favorite themes in all of... um, All of media and storytelling and everything. Oh, I just... Yeah, I just remembered he did sign symbols, tokens. That's about sex. The law of chastity. Law of of chastity. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So... Listen to however long and hard the road. Listen to of souls, symbols, and sacraments. And what did you say? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like tokens, <laughs> tokens, symbols, symbols, and sex. <laughs> sex. <laughs> We're gonna have to go back to the tape. I was like, what did I call it? Sex lies in a video. Souls, tape. symbols, and tokens. I think I called it. Yeah. No tokens. Not of yet. soul, souls, symbols, and sacraments, yes. and it is. Quite a powerful talk. Um, yeah, so many good Elder Holland talk. It's like if you ever feel sad. We've gotten three. <laughs> three. That dude, tip of Fine. my, top maybe of my he's head, like, head, dude. Maybe he's like top ten. Tip of, my, top, top, tip of top of my head, man. There's so many more. You know what else is a good one? Uh, what is it? Oh, cast not away, therefore thy confidence. By Holland. Man, I'm just like, these are all, it's all coming back to me. Do you have a poster of Jeffrey R. Holland in your bedroom? He's in my bedroom. I got a a picture of your mom and dad, and then a picture of Jeffrey R. Holland on your nightstand. Yeah. You kiss them both every night. And I got the stuffed doll version of uh, Jeffrey R. Holland. He's got a string on his back, and I pull it. And when I pull it, he says, you have to crawl over the Book of Mormon and shoot Joseph Smith in the head if you want to leave this church. And uh, that's not going to make a lot of sense to some people. <laughs> He's like, Joseph Smith's on one train track. <laughs> the Book of Mormon and your parents are on another. <laughs> Who do you save? And I'm like, good morning to you too, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and then I brush my teeth and go to work. <laughs> yeah. The Jeffrey R. Holland doll. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And then you have like one for Bruce R. McConkie. Yeah. Yeah. But Packer. you pulled some like BYU devotional talks, which is unfair. Dude, he's got some good. Because he was like president of BYU or something. Yeah. And he had a little more latitude of what he was like allowed to. You know, he could be a little more. Um, I feel like general conference, you got to be, you know, sort of toe the line, be as general as possible. As I said, one of my favorite quotes from this whole podcast of mine is that I personally believe that general conference is too general. I think it needs mm-hmm. to be more specific. Um, you're, you're right. We, didn't, we wanted specific conference. Your 
upsetness with him, though, if I understand this last and maybe a few of his talks, was that he was too specific. He was talking to a very kind of a specific set of people. He talked to depressed people once. He talked to some other group another time. That I remember this from. Just trust me. This sounds like something I might have said. Okay. So, uh, Jeffrey Hall, that's my number one. Do you have a, a top three or a number one? Speakers. Speakers. Orators. I mean, I know it's... Can I guess what you're going to say? You can guess first. You're going to put D. Todd somewhere up there. Maybe number one. Not number... That'd be silly. You'd, you'd, that'd be fanboying a little too hard to put him number one. <laughs> you're like, you know he doesn't quite deserve number one. You know. My personal biases aside, yeah. he can't be number one. Who's your number one? And we're talking all time here, I guess, so we got a, a wide berth of people to choose from. You know I can't stray away from my boy. Who's your boy? B.H. Roberts? Stick a Bruce. Bruce, okay, yeah. Bruce R. McConkey. And that is a perfect impression, by the way. Sure. Lyndon's eyes lit up. He was like, is he here? <laughs> Yeah, and then D. Todd's right there. It's number two. <laughs> number three. <laughs> it's number three. Who's number two? Who's number two? Oh, yeah, this is the impossible task <laughs> that you had <laughs> planned for us. Top ten. Top ten. Top, yeah. top ten seventies. <laughs> That's crazy, but let's just, off the dome, L. Whitney Clayton. <sighs> Don't even... Yeah, he's got he's had some bangers. Oh, Whitney Clayton. Lyndon W. Clayton. Yeah. For sure him. Callister is another one. Yeah. Now it's too easy. Bruce C. Hafen. Uh okay. These guys could like they're like the shadow quorum of the twelve. Yeah, it's like they're they're on deck to become maybe quorum of the twelve well, I, I don't know. I've been saying that, and then these uh no names get into the friggin' no namers come on. <laughs> Uh, who else? Uh, do I only know three seventies? <laughs> who else do I know? Richard G. Hinckley. <laughs> yeah, for for no, the nepotism, of course. Of course. Yo, I met him. Did I ever really? tell you this? Yeah, I met him on the Mish, and uh, we had like a little sort of. I was in a small room with him, with some other people, and. Uh, I was obsessed with like, what do I do with my life after my mission? That was my whole thing, especially later on in the mission. I was like, what do I do? And he's like, get married, go to school, have some kids. And I'm like, but what do I do? He's like, get married, <laughs> go to school, have some kids. Have some kids. <laughs> Gordon B is my father. Actually, he sounded, he looked like him, mm. didn't sound like him. Yeah, speaking of 70s you met on the mission, mm -hmm. uh, Craig C. Christensen uh, and his wife came to visit us. Uh, I found both of them very unsettling. <laughs> oh, no. I guess, wait, I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I found them very unsettling. Why? And they were like, for Craig C. Christensen. What do you mean unsettling? Like the shining unsettling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah no exactly like that like at one moment they're like elder and then like their circuitry or something would like <laughs> default and they would murder us all turn into like right. terminators you know we're just mixing all these references up aren't we i'm just you know can't i just say they unsettled me and it was like a common a lot of missionaries were like what's the deal with sister christensen hmm. she was weird like the kind of thing where they would, they might be liable to put like, on a mask and well, it was like when go to they a were secret like, party. When they're like up on the podium because it's like, you know, mission conference or whatever. Obviously, the whole mission gets together because the general authorities are here. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they're up giving us a little talk, it's just like, you know, you're like exactly what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. But then when they're like mingling and interacting with us, they're they're like aliens. Interesting. They're like aliens wearing people skin. Huh. 
But you ba- know what? Just bad socially. They just don't know how to interact socially. It was unsettling. <laughs> I'm so curious. <laughs> but then again, it's like, if you made me go hang out with a bunch of 18-year-old missionaries and I had mm-hmm. to go mingle with them, mm. they'd probably be unsettled by me. Forget about it. Yeah. Because I'd be like, hey, your kid's like... Fortnite and the gospel? I don't know. Like, they're like, <laughs> Cardi B. They're like, Blessing, blessings be upon you, elders and sisters, as I walk around. I don't know. God bless you, elders. I'm going to so, go watch a movie now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they watch movies? Do they watch movies? I'm sure they watch Remember the Titans yeah. on every road trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they watch Prince Caspian on the daily. What, uh, what time do you have to... To go. Oh gosh, I got a basketball game. What time oh, is- I got it. it starts in an hour. Okay. Well, we're at an hour right now. Do we do we want to he- head into some emails real quick? Yeah, let's uh, just give them the least amount of effort and time that we possibly could. Yeah, yeah. Let's start with. Uh, let's end on that note because I think it's more positive. Oh, I don't. Know, it's too much. I think it's almost too much. What is too much? Andrew Cacao. He sent us an email. He's like, because I guess we said, is he upset? And uh, his, his he says, I could definitely say, I could say I'm definitely not upset with your response to the email, but I wish you would call me instead of having back and forth, blah, 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 over the, the thing. We should have Andrew back on. If anything, constant joining. He's, he's, he's saying that we're teasing him about coming on the podcast, but. Are we? No. Well, yes. But well, also I, no. you know, he can book a he can book a plane to Calgary. You know, say he's coming to visit his family, surprise visit to the family. Yeah. Just so he can come on the podcast. You know what? But if he wants us to download some sort of podcasting program so we can like Hell call no. him in. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Sorry. That's not how we do it. Hey. We need what did I call it? Direct social I a face mail. We have to face, face mail, mail each other. Each other face in face. person. In person. You can come face mail us. Yeah. Plus it's just like I don't I don't know. Do people want to hear the email? Do people want to hear a, an email getting read? Well, that email he's just trying to communicate with us, isn't he? Yeah. And he, here's the other thing. He kind of goes into like Joseph Smith, polygamy, how we did before. And he just, it's like, maybe it would be sort of be better saved if we just sort of, you know, hey, come to town and we'll have you on the cast. We'll set up that third mic. We'll set up that lonely third microphone. Oh, yeah, we haven't had a guest in ages Uh, for the best. It's been so freeing. It has been freeing. Remember guests? Yeah. I liked uh, a lot of our guests. (laughs) I liked them all. I liked all of our guests. But um, I do like, I admit, the freedom to simply uh, jabber about whatever we want. I kind of miss it. It's like, you know, you can't taste the sweet without the bitter. So you're saying we need to get a guest in here. Who would we have? I don't know. We don't know anyone else. It's true. Never mind. Uh, uh, Wasn't there like a... We had a short list of people who said they're like, yeah, I want to come on. <laughs> I think they all got married. They all moved on. Hey, well, they might be bored. And you know what? Yeah, that's can... like, they're like, I don't have anyone to impress by telling my mission <laughs> stories on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then we could get back into more mission, uh, missionary sort of stuff. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> I don't care. Again, we're just chasing our still, interests here. We're like a plat. We could still be a platform we're for a, people to tell their mission stories. We're a platform. But remember when some people's mission story? Remember how it became a brand? Boring. Because it's like a funny part of the culture. Right. Why is it a funny part of the culture? Because it's funny and interesting. Because everyone's got mission stories and they're all terrible. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the disclaimer. I don't know. Sometimes they're interesting. If nothing else, true. <clears throat> you gotta sift through the ore to get to the nuggets. Whatever that means. <laughs> interesting, you gotta, interesting choice of. Uh, you gotta refine metaphor. the ore through technical processes mm-hmm. to get to the useful 
material. That old saying. As they always say. Refine the ortho-technical <laughs> processes to get to the, what was it? Useful the, material. Useful material. <laughs> a tale as old as time. A tale as old as t- time itself. Well, um, oh, let's read just a short, actually, I, I'm, I don't oh, even know. And also the other, the third, the third thing from my face mail yeah. was it's like, why'd you have to roast Joe so hard? <laughs> that was the best part of the podcast. And I was like, I got to roast him for another hour. Yeah. Let's hour two begin. You I still don't have my video. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Joe. Every day. Every day you don't deliver the video. (laughs) Is one minute of roasting you're going to get on this podcast. That's right. We should write roast jokes (laughs) and read them on the the podcast. Yeah. If you have a roast joke, submit it. Yeah, Jasmine was like, you're going to ruin his business. (laughs) No, he won't. And I was like, "Uh, the guy was Alberta Wedding Cinematographer of the Year. Yeah. I was like, oh, wait, how could that possibly be a real award? (laughs) Yeah. Man, if we have the power to bring anyone down, that's impressive. Yeah. And for that reason, I hope we do bring Joe Sam down. Where it doesn't matter if he's delivered a hundred successful videos. <laughs> and they've looked beautiful and, and wonderful. And they looked beautiful. He hasn't delivered my video. Masterfully edited. He did, yeah. de- though, he did deliver. The four minute one. A video. He did kind of deliver on He gave promise. us a 30 second sneak peek. Yeah. Which we milked that for as long as possible. Uh-huh. And then he gave us a four minute one. Mm-hmm. And but, it sucks. But I only <laughs> wanted the footage of the speeches. <laughs> That's what I want too. And then I want you to get that and you can edit it into something great. Dude, I'm going to. That can be our next mission stories. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can you're... work some magic and. If you're willing, I would 100% release that to the world. Can you imagine like re- the world. recreating all the all the hard feelings? <laughs> like if we did a skit that we somehow cut in like actual <laughs> Oh man. Oh, this is a great idea. I mean, people loved the uh the one the one little sketch. The pre the pre-wedding sketch? Yeah. They did, the, didn't the, they? The Troy and Lyndon's. We classic. should do, we should do another one of those. Another another one of those rat a tat tat. Here's some scat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've enjoyed this episode, Lyndon. You know how last episode it finished and we were like, oh, yo, yo, it was that? We didn't, because we don't have like a clear direction, so we never have a clear ending. Yeah. So we're kind of just like hip it hip it hip it hip it hip it hip boop. I've enjoyed this one. We've sort of gotten to the bottom of who the yeah. best speakers are. We had a good time. One of the goals was let's give us an impossible task to yeah. make a ranked list. Yeah. That's a goal we have all the time. Yes. And we made a ranked list. I just like the idea of giving us really hard tasks to to uh, come up with on the fly. And then uh, I was like really surprised how well we did with the 70 thing. <laughs> we listed like three of them and we're like, we're so good. I'm still impressed. Oh, what about this one? Kikuchi, Elder Kikuchi. Which one is that? Uh, he was very famous in my mission because of the Kikuchi method. Oh, yep, you mentioned that. Yeah. See, I was going to say... A, that's a whole episode. Well, I was going to this last conference, there was uh, the black African American. Yeah. From like Harlem. First African American 70. Because they've just had African 70s. Isn't that crazy? So this is the first African American. <laughs> That's nuts. Where is he? is he? I feel bad. I think I said he's from Harlem. He could be from the Bronx or Queens. <laughs> but I mean, like, he got up there and he was very Manhattan. colloquial. Yeah, he was good. He had a lot of heart. Which is what you can do when you're a 70 at General Conference. Yeah, you you can afford to have heart. So it's almost like they have more power than the apostles. Oh my gosh. Are you starting a coup? <laughs> I want in. The B.H. Robertians. <laughs> the 70 should have more power. Than... The 70 shall rise again. Just kidding. That'd be silly. Hey, how's this for a movie idea? Go ahead. Remember when we said we should be playwrights? Yeah. How's this for a play? How about, how's this for, let's become screenwrites. There's, it's sort of like uh, a guy has to p- 
put on. He has to. It's about mixed martial arts. <laughs> okay. And we haven't had enough of those. And there has to be something. It's like he's he's shoved into a scenario. Him and like a group of people. They have to they have to make the appearance of their being of a fighter who has nothing to do with fighting becoming a fighter and like leading up to the fight. So they have to make all the like the footage, like the slow mo shadow boxing and the training in the gym and him sweaty just after a workout and everything. And they have to market it leading up to this thing for some reason. I don't know why. But he's not an actual fighter. He's not an actual fighter. He's an actor. Yeah. And yeah, or something like that. And they're like, and the scam is we're going to like something will happen so that at the last minute I don't have to fight. But then like maybe he actually has to fight. Now he's like in the ring or I don't know. How do you, what do you think about that as an idea for a movie? Didn't they kind of do that with Paul Blart? Didn't he have to become a mixed martial <sighs> artist? Oh, dang it. And it's like he's not a fighter. Well, no, that's it. That's it. The story of a man overcoming uh you know large odds to do something extraordinary this would just be like a scam almost like a heist movie but with martial arts kind of like conor mcgregor <laughs> yeah where he was like all about publicity yeah. and hyping himself up mm -hmm. but then he turned out to not be that great of a fighter he had a short kind of shelf life sort of a meteoric rise and then a kind of a roaming candle burst and every time he's entered the octagon since geez i want to say like four or five years now he just has not uh, like uh, didn't he almost scam everyone like he made like a hundred million dollars on that boxing yeah, fight that boxing fight was a stroke of marketing and financial genius on his part but uh <clears throat> so do you just want to do like a dramatized version of conor mcgregor not necessarily. It would be sort of, uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> um, anyway, that has nothing to do with anything, but uh, I kind of just wanted to put it I on. I think we should write a play first. What should our play be about? Joseph Smith. Music. The hymns. M music. Music the, the hymns. hymns. Yes. And yeah. of course, that play writes itself. Basically. Yeah. Like, remember when they were making a new hymn book? Is yeah. that why they canceled hymns in church? <laughs> so to, get, to give them time to uh, write new hymns. Where you're not allowed to open Sunday school or elders quorum or leave society with hymns. Yeah. Because they're like, we want you to forget them. Forget those stupid hymns. Because we're giving you new ones. Here's some herms. Music the hymns. Music the hymns. <laughs> That's how we started the podcast. That's how we're going to end. That's it. how we end. Well, Lyndon, is there anything else we need to discuss before we release you? We have caught you, and now we will release you. Well, we always have, you know, the commitment sequence. Promise them blessings. Leave them a commitment. True and faithful. Give us your list of yes. top ten speakers. Top ten, top Top three. five. Top if you 20. can handle it, top three. Top 30 if you're really good. You know, send us comment on Instagram. We still have an Instagram. We still have an Instagram. You don't have to email us. You can hit us in the DMs or the comments on the Scram. The Mission Stories Podcast at gmail.com. The Mission Stories Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Uh, the post will probably be a picture of Bruce R. McConkie with the crown. <laughs> It is now. For being, actually, I saw they're selling posters at the school, and one of them was like Kobe, Michael Jordan, and LeBron, mm -hmm. like sitting side by side, like the three bet. And I, I thought it was disgusting. Why? I was like, those three people don't belong in a picture together. Where's Wilt the Stilt? Exactly. Yeah. I was like, Kobe, Where's MJ, Larry, LeBron. I was Larry, like, no, Larry you, can't, Bird. you can't be a fan of all three of them. <laughs> Why if not? you're a fan of Kobe, you're a fan of rape. I wasn't going to go there, <laughs> but I was like, that's disgusting. Didn't he rape someone? No, he did not. Okay. The courts acquitted him. Yeah. Okay. The justice system said, not a rapist, just a philanderer. Okay. But anyways. And so a it, wizard on the court. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of a picture of those three basketball players, a picture of the top three speakers okay. is what I want. 
But anyways, so yeah, that's the that's the commitment for the true and faithful. Go out, be like Troy, find your like, if not the top three or top five best speakers, your top five greatest conference talks. Mm -hmm. Send them to us. Yes. Troy's on a mission to learn. I'm going to dive. And to hear the best general conference talks. Guys, I'm diving back in. Because he's on a mission to read the best. Because remember, life's a mission. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>